Hi, welcome to another episode of Making the Right Move. We're so thankful that you've joined us today and we believe that God will bless you. Please let us know where you're watching us from and if you can, drop us a line in the comments so that we know that you are with us and that you're watching and that the program is meaningful to you. If you'd like to give, please uh, take note that the platforms, the different uh, platforms through which you can give are available on the screen and pick whichever one is appropriate for you. And we thank you so much for your financial support. It's helping things keep going here. And we thank God for you. Please enjoy Enjoy the following music video is from Chileshe Walia Tefionali. See you on the other side.
Hi, welcome back. My guest today is Mrs. Mizinga Melu. She is the Chief Executive Officer of APSA Bank here in Zambia, and she is a woman of God. You will be blessed. She has been uh, CEO of Standard Chartered Bank. She was the first uh, woman CEO of Standard B Chartered Bank, and she was the first Zambian CEO of Standard Chartered Bank. And over the years, of course, she has held different positions as CEO of different banks in different uh, countries. In fact, she has got so many accolades, I probably would take the whole program just to go through them. But I would like for you to help me make welcome Mrs. Mizinga Melu to making the right move on this day. Mrs. Mizinga Melu, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you very much for having me. I'm truly, truly honored. It's always a pleasure for me to come back to Mount Zion. Now so we're thank glad you to so have much. you and, and excited mm. to have you. No, thank you. Thanks yes. a lot. Mm -hmm. Let me probably take you back as we begin the program. Mm -hmm. uh, I think if I remember correctly, it was somewhere in the 90s. I can't remember which year exactly that I first met you. That's and right. You were working at Standard Chartered Bank there. That's Right. And uh, I think I started learning from you back in those days wow. because I'll tell you what happened. Mm -hmm. I supplied you some chickens. I don't know if you remember. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if I you don't remember. remember. I, need to I ask supplied. Raymond. Yes, Raymond was the one that introduced me, and I supplied you some chickens. And I don't know what happened and went bad, but I remember when I met you. You said this to me: "Everything is negotiable." Wow. Everything is negotiable, mm -hmm. but quality. Wow, okay. And to this day, I still remember that. Thank you very much. I don't even <laughs> that's remember how, saying That's how it. much I have been learning from you without you even knowing. Oh, thank you so much. Some lessons have been, have been obviously expressed. Some lessons have been almost vicarious where I'm just watching from afar. Uh -huh, and uh -huh. I've, I've learned a lot. And I'm so grateful for the example, the, 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 the if you like, the... the having provided for us right. a, a, a standard that we can look at and that Thank can you. help to inspire mm -hmm. some of us in terms of mm -hmm. how you have done things for the first time. We give God all the glory. And, you know, it's been through. It hasn't been easy, but, yeah. uh, you know, we give God all the glory. And uh, you have done so well. And uh, I'm, I'm really so proud of you. Thank you. You know, I, I'm really, really so proud Thank of you. you. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. We're learning. We're learning. We're learning. And yes. We, we learn and grow. That's I so would true. say we learn and grow. That's so true. Yeah. Please tell us uh, a little bit about your leadership leadership journey. I mean, of course, like I said, I knew yeah. you from those days. Yeah. I think then you were still in Treasury. I can't remember whether you were ahead or just in Treasury. Yeah. I can't remember, but I remember that. Yes. Uh, and and uh, please tell us a little bit about how your journey has been to where you are today. Yeah. We'd yes. like to know a little bit about that. So my journey has been an exciting one. It's been one that I say, yeah, it's been a journey to the boardroom. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because, you know, as you are growing in your career, you just aspire because you see all the CEOs you know, in the boardroom when you want to have a meeting with them. Yeah. And you're so scared of them and thinking, <laughs> maybe one day, maybe one day I'll make it to the boardroom as a CEO. So that's been my journey. Um, and really, I started off uh, from the bottom. You know, really, uh, really from the West Department. We used to call it West, W-A-S-T-E, uh, <laughs> in Zanako then. Mm -hmm. And it's, what's been interesting is my journey moving from then, uh, uh, you know, to different roles in the bank, taking me all the way to CEO. I always say to the people in the bank that there's very little that you can do that I want. Nah, they, they're yeah. not tricks, right? Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I understand. You've been so, through so, it all. I've, yeah. I've been through it all. So for me, my journey has been working really in different departments especially in the treasury, like you rightly say, mm -hmm. being in sales. Uh, but before that, if I just take you back a yeah. bit, I always say I started from McDonald's, you know, and I have a lot of, um, you know, pride in talking about the time when I used to work in McDonald's, mm. you know, in the UK. And that's when I learned how to sell. <laughs> because, you know, in McDonald's, they teach you how to sell and mm. how to cross sell and how to understand your product. Mm. And what you learn, even when you're just doing those or jobs we used to call them, mm. really helps you throughout your career. Mm. You know, so when I joined Sunder Charter, then I worked in Treasury. I worked in different countries on the continent. Uh, you know, I worked in financial institutions, being trusted to do big jobs, uh, you know, on the continent. You know, then I worked in the UK, again, being trusted to do the big jobs as global head of development organizations. Wow. Before, um, you know, God opened the door for me to be the first CEO in Standard Chartered. And that was an amazing opportunity, one that... I only always aspired that one day I can be CEO. Wow. And when it happened, that was in 2008, uh, God has never given me any other job other than a CEO role. Wow. And I just thank God for the journey. But it's been a journey where 
you know, you start from McDonald's, you do a bit of nursing. I've told that story before. Mm -hmm. Then you go into, you know, treasury and you do many other jobs in many other countries um, until where I am now, you know. So, so it's been an exciting journey, a journey that, you know, takes you uh, in different countries and different jobs and different banks yeah. as well. Mm. You did work in uh, Tanzania as well. I did. Tell us about I that. Did. Yes. So in Tanzania, I've worked, I worked there twice. So the first time, I had always wanted to be a treasurer. Mm -hmm. So I say, just one day, I hope I can be treasurer. So I didn't make it to be a treasurer here in Zambia. Mm -hmm. And what happened is that God blessed me and opened the door uh, to be treasurer in Tanzania. So mm -hmm. that was great. But Tanzania was also quite challenging because of the culture. Mm -hmm. So I'm a, brought up uh, a Christian, mm -hmm. but in Tanzania, they are Muslim. More than 50% of the people are Muslim. Yes. And uh, that for me was one that uh, it really needed a lot of grace to understand, especially the second time I went there as CEO now. Yes. You know, I went there to manage one of the banks for Barclays then mm -hmm. as CEO. And when you are a CEO and you are the leader and you don't understand the cultures, it mm -hmm. can be quite interesting. Mm -hmm. And I always tell a story on, uh, you know, when they were breaking, uh, you know, during Ramadan, you have to break the fast. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they break the fast as banks, we sponsor big events, mm -hmm. you know, and all the Muslims come, most of the clients, mm -hmm. and you have to speak. So there's this one day when uh, one of, um, you know, my peer said, you know what, it's the first time you're speaking at a Muslim event, please wear something long. Okay, so I said, yeah, I'm going to wear something long. So I went in my wardrobe and I'm like, okay, this is the longest. And, uh, you know, put on this dress. It wasn't covering all my legs. It wasn't covering my hands. And I didn't realize, you know, sometimes ignorance, you just don't yeah, know. Yeah, yes. And you come and you're talking to, um, to clients and everybody's looking at you like there's something wrong there. Uh, so I stood up to speak to them. And when I finished, one of the board members said, oh, no, you know, what you did was totally wrong. Next oh. time, you know, try and dress like a Nigerian, you know, from top to bottom. <laughs> so, so, Tan all the feet. <laughs> <laughs> so Tanzania was interesting like that because mm. uh, there was a lot of culture conflict mm. for me personally. Mm. Uh, you know, in terms of there's a lot that I didn't understand on the Muslim culture, mm. but also you are leading because you have to lead everybody, uh, you know, in the bank from different cultures, but you have to learn as you grow. So it was quite interesting, but it's a, it's a great market, very different. I always say you find the great in everywhere that you go. So, mm -hmm. true. so you have been uh, in uh -huh. the UK, yeah. South Africa, Zambia, yeah. Uganda. Uh, Uganda, Uganda. I love Uganda. Wow. Yes. All of, yeah. So you, you've just been and probably, Kenya. And yes, Kenya. and Kenya. Yes. Wow. Yeah, and Kenya and South Africa. But but funny enough, you know, it's a, it's a deja vu as they call it, because in most of these countries, I've kind of gone there back, gone there twice. Yes. You know, you know, in Tanzania, I had to go back twice. Uh, you know, in Kenya as well as in South Africa. So it, it's been quite interesting. Uh, but everything said and done. Uh, I'm happy to be home, uh, yeah, and happy I'm happy. Home. Yeah, and I'm happy to like having learned or everything else mm. uh, from the different uh, countries. It wasn't always. It's never easy when you're working in a foreign country, but there's a lot that you learn, mm. and then you really grow as a leader. And that's where my leadership journey really matures. It matures in learning from different countries, mm. from learning from different people, how they lead, mm. different cultures, you know, whether you're Muslim or Christian, just learning from everyone and putting it all together and having the grace of God to guide you as you're going in these different places. Wow. Mm -hmm. So in your experience, mm -hmm. of course, probably we might not get everything. Yeah. But what would you say is probably your secret to your leadership success? Mm -hmm. What are some of the keys that have helped you to thrive in yeah, all these different yeah. places to arrive where you are? I mean, firstly, uh, Pastor Bruce, as I've been going through the different countries, the different journeys, uh, there's been a lot of challenges that I've had to overcome, but there's been a lot of successes. Mm. And it's always interesting because after every challenge you find, you know, you look forward to that great success that, that comes. Uh, so I think it's really having the grace of God, knowing that, especially when you go in a new job, in a new country, knowing that the first thing I would always look for is, where is the right, where is the church? Where is the mm. right church? Because you yes. need that yes. covering. Yes. You know, you need that grace, yes. you know, to just know that you need that connection. Somehow you have people who you have, you're speaking the same language, yes. so to say. Yes. Uh, so for me, that's been my greatest success. Just knowing that wherever I go, 
I can't do it without the grace of, of God. And my husband and my children, we will all go through that to say, look, we have to stay connected. Mm. So staying connected uh, is one. And surrounding myself with great people. Mm. You know, I would say uh, my success is only as good as the people I have around me. And they, they are very diverse. You know, uh, my success has been having people who are diverse in gender, diverse in personality. You know, there are some who I always say, you know, I'm ready to be challenged. Tell me anything. It's fine. Uh, obviously, with respect. But you can challenge me. And you, as long as you have people who are different and are able to deliver for you, you find that that's actually the biggest component. It's having the, 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 having the right people. And also, you know, I always say, especially as an African woman, there's something about an African woman that says you have to work extra harder, mm. you know, yes. and, and it's a theory that, uh, you know, I know the men would say, but, you know, even we have to work harder, but it, it's just engraved in me that I have to put on, to put on my best at any one point mm. so that if I'm challenged for anything, it should not be because you did not put in your best mm. and you did not work hard. So I have to lead by example by, I thank God for giving me so much energy because I have to always lead. And uh, so for me, that's really been my greatest success, having the right people, putting in my best and putting God ahead of everything that I do, but also having a supportive family. Mm. Um, you know, I always say there's no way, you know, bringing up, you know, children and, uh, you know, working the long hours that I did, if I didn't have a supportive husband, there's no way I would have managed. So that is one of the biggest successes. So family, amongst everything else that you do, family has to be at the center of that. Mrs. Melu, yeah. many people struggle mm -hmm. with the balance of work and life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How to balance, how effective you can be with life outside of work. Some mm -hmm. people uh, probably overinvest themselves mm -hmm. in their careers that they forget about home. Mm -hmm. And some people probably vice versa. Right. How have you managed this? You know, it, it, it's always, I mean, and I get asked that question a lot because, um, you know, I've, I've, got, a, I've got young children. Mm. You know, my, my children are really young. My daughter is nearly 11 now. So meaning you have to be there for them at home and you have to show up. And I always say the best way to to strike that balance is to do something that you enjoy. And I truly enjoy the job that I do. You know, uh, being a CEO of a very dynamic bank for me is something that I truly enjoy. So when you show up at work, it doesn't sometimes feel like I'm at work. It just feels like, okay, I'm here doing something that I love and I enjoy. And when you're at home, you also show up completely. So it's just about how I've managed to do something that I enjoy because then the stress levels don't really follow you around because, you know, you're there doing what you enjoy. Uh, but also, like I said earlier, having a good support function has helped. I mean, my husband has been really a great support function for me. And, uh, you know, and sometimes we underestimate the value our helpers in the home mm. bring. And yes. I always say, we always have to thank God for them because mm. they truly, truly help so us. True. Huh? So they true. truly so help true. us to say, look, help me with the kids before yes. I show up. So having that family support system has helped. But at the office, like I say, if you've got great people, which I've always had, great people that I work with, and I love what I do, I'm passionate about it, I show up, you know, knowing that, you know, it is well at home, then you find that it balances very well. But also I prioritize a lot in my life. Mm. Uh, there are certain things I'm very selective of how many friends I associate with, just yes. because there's no time for that. Mm. You know, you, you know, I've got, um, you know, a few of my friends and I'll kind of stick to, with them. I've, mm. I've grown up with them and, uh, and that'll be, oh, I, I'm not, uh, you know, this time which kitchen party is going on and, and all that, you, up, you know, yeah. because all those things sometimes distract you. So you have to prioritize what you spend your time with outside the office. But even at the office, just go there, enjoy it. So it's, it's the art of showing up, the art of showing up well at the office and showing up well at home. I think that balance is just great. I'll tell you a gospel that I've preached. That is the gospel according to Mrs. Meadow. Mm -hmm. This gospel I've preached because there was a time you invited us for lunch. And I don't know if you remember. Right. You invited us for lunch. Okay. And I couldn't, for the life of me, come to terms as to how busy you are and right. how, how your job is so demanding. Uh -huh. And yet, 
we were having lunch during a weekday. I know, at right? Your house. I'm like, how do you even manage this? And you know what? The art of that was I actually cooked the lunch. Yes, I so remember. So from the that. office, I'll go home, I'll cook the lunch. And then, but again, like I say, you, you actually learn that uh, when you enjoy what you're doing and you have the joy, it's the joy of doing what, you know, really enjoying what you're doing. And, and it kind of worked. I, I, and I just, for the life of me to this day, I don't know how you do that or how uh, you even manage. Because I, I was, I was I'm like, you are so busy at work. Your yeah. job is so demanding. Yeah. And yet here we are having lunch. And this is not a weekend. <laughs> this is a weekday. a weekday. I mean, if we're having dinner, if we're having something else in the evening, yeah. I would understand. But this mm -hmm. was lunch. And mm -hmm. after lunch, you jumped into your car and you rushed I off. know. And I asked myself, how do you <laughs> Do I that. know, I know. God's <laughs> grace, you know, has given me that strength. To, and plus, also, I mean, uh, one of the things that leaders do, talking about leadership, leaders need is the power to, is the art of multitasking, mm. to be able to do many things at the same time. And um, uh, if you are able to master that, it actually works very well. You know, at the weekend, I was talking to the ladies about cooking from the boardroom, mm -hmm. that you don't necessarily, uh, you know, have to say, you know, I've got to be at home for my husband to eat the traditional meals. You can actually do both, mm -hmm. be in the boardroom, running a board meeting, but knowing that I'm going home and my husband is going to have her, his beans for lunch. Wow. You know, mm -hmm. so it's the art of being able to do that. So the power of multitasking, I think that works well. So it's worked well for me over the years, and yes. I thank God for that. Wow. Yeah. I, it, I probably thank God that you have that ability. They say most men can't mount it. That is true. That is true. So but thank uh, God that you are yeah. able to do that. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should also ask this. Right now we're in a season that is very challenging. Yeah. And uh, there are people probably from uh, right from your small, medium-sized uh, business leaders, mm -hmm. uh, right to the guys who are running big conglomerates mm -hmm. that are that are trying to, uh, if you like, scale through and navigate mm -hmm. through this season. Mm -hmm. What would you say is a secret? What are some of the keys that one can do, especially to lead in times like the ones we're in? You know, lead, leading in, uh, especially during these COVID-19 times, is one that really, um, number one, is to appreciate that the most important resources that you have and you have to keep safe are your people. Mm. And your people here, it will be your people at the office and also your clients. Mm. And uh, that, I mean, COVID-19 requires us, I spend a lot of my time just ensuring that all our staff are well taken care of. And every client who comes through the banking hall, you know, has to also be taken care of. So that's the first thing every business person is grappling with. How do we maintain that? But I think secondly is the ability to communicate. I think every leader during this time has to have the ability to communicate to your to your clients and to your staff, but especially your staff, because if you communicate well, number one, they're going through a lot of anxiety right so now. A lot of anxiety. They are not sure whether their jobs are safe. They are not sure whether, uh, you know, even if you say, okay, fine, you're on leave, like a lot of companies have been sending people on leave. When you get home, you know, my driver, I say to him, you know, you can take leave now because, you know, I was working from home quite a bit. And he was telling me, my wife was asking me, do you still have a job? Mm. So that's real anxiety mm. that people are going through. But when you communicate directly and say, look, our vision is still there. Yes, it could be a little bit different because of COVID-19 in terms of how we are dealing with. But communication is key. Mm. And uh, to all the businesses is staying in touch with your clients. Staying in touch with each and every one of your clients, just reassuring them that as we are navigating through this journey, uh, yes, it's going to be tough for everybody. And in some cases, some um, companies have closed, so uh, which is so sad yes. and which is a reality. It's a reality. But it's still saying, let's look at the long term, mm -hmm. you know, as we're going through that. So I think for me, it's being being present. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, we can't afford to just hide ourselves as leaders. We have to be present. But we also have to be very resilient, mm -hmm. you know, as we're going through this. Just I think the businesses that uh, will do well at the end of the days are those who say it was tough, but we still grew. It was tough, but we still do, did well. And that is, uh, we need a lot of leadership, as you, you know, as you've, as you've rightly asked, to say, what type of leadership do we really need during this time? It's just to be present with our clients. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
I, I'm going to probably, I wish at this moment, I, I, I wish you were a prophetess. Mm -hmm. Because the question I'm about to ask you might need you to be a bit right. prophetic. Right, okay. In your opinion. Yeah. What do you see the landscape like in the next probably 24 months, business landscape? And how can a leader begin to, if mm -hmm. you like, position themselves mm -hmm. for what might play out in the next 24 months? So, I mean, that's a great question. And we have to... As we're thinking of the next 24 months, I think every leader, every business has to really think of three things. Number one, what is going to continue being the same mm. as it was before COVID? Mm. You know? Number two, what's going to change? And number three, what's going to accelerate? Wow, that's powerful. So that's some things powerful. will change. Yes. And some things will, will stay the same. Will stay the same. Some will accelerate. Yes. And as a leader, you have to, as you're managing your business, have to say, let me not be short. Let me be conscious of what's happening short term. Mm. Whatever is happening short term is real. Mm. It's real that the airlines are not flying. Mm. So yes. you can't say, oh, no, no, just think long term. Because you have to navigate that. Mm. But even amongst that, you have to say, when we now, uh, you know, start flying, just to use the airlines, for example, or mm. when the hotels now open, what are we going to do differently yes. that we're not doing? And there are some things that are working that we started using this time during COVID mm. that actually we didn't realize that can work, like what we're doing now. So, so the digital agenda is going to be very big. Mm. So for every business people, um, I encourage you to look at the business agenda because that the digitally led uh, you know, agenda is going to be a very big one. Mm. Uh, whether you are just... Um, you know, running any business, whether you're running a show like we're doing, you have, or whether you're like a bank, people don't want to handle cash, you always have to think of how is the digital agenda going to look like. Mm -hmm. But for every business is to, and Mackenzie talks about this a lot, how do you reimagine your future? Mm -hmm. We have to now start reimagining my future when whatever I'm doing that is working accelerates. Mm -hmm. How am I going to actually do that? Mm -hmm. um, and we talk about growth. For every business, I encourage every business, if I have to be prophetic, to still think of growth, mm. you know, to still think of growth, to say, amidst this difficult environment, number one, I have to survive, mm. and beyond survival, I have to grow. Yes. And to grow, I have to pick up the things that are working and continue doing them and mm. do them well. Mm. And there are some things I have to stop. Mm. They worked for me before COVID. But they they're not going to work okay. for me now. Yes. I have to stop that. Mm. So when you think of starts, you know, you know, start, stop, and accelerate, you find that I think it's, you know, some businesses will do it. But think of the resources. The way we are balancing uh, our resources as business leaders is going to be different uh, because now cost issue comes in. Mm. The cost issue is a big one so uh, because now you're thinking, how do I allocate my resources. There are certain things that I could do before. I could have billboards everywhere to advertise my business. Mm. Maybe I can't do that anymore yes. because Cut there's no that. money. Yes. Now maybe it's just me just sending emailers, mm. uh, maybe using Facebook more and all that. Yes. So resources and resource allocation is going to be something I really, like truly uh, yes. big. Yes. Whether you are just whether, whether even if you're, you're just a church, you're, you're, you're anything, you're just running an SME, your resource allocation is going to be big because mm. there's no real money to go around. Mm. And the COVID, in my view, is going to be with us for the next uh, probably 12 to 24 months. Mm. So we have to think of it that way. Mm. If it finishes early, then we thank God. We thank and God I will for say, that. for me, the test, and this is my personal opinion, will be when you can fly to a country and they don't put you in quarantine, quarantine. Mm. and you come back, mm. then that's when normality comes. Mm. Until if they say you have to quarantine even for a day, then we're not in yet the normal there. state. We're not yet and there. as long as we're not in the normal state, our clients will need our support. Mm -hmm. I'm curious to find out, uh, having probably seen the journey that you have taken, your leadership mm -hmm. journey, and seeing you evolve and mm -hmm. become who you are today mm -hmm. and score some of the successes that you have. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm curious to find out what, what is in the future for you mm -hmm. personally. Uh, mm -hmm. what, what is it that you would like to do beyond CEO? Yeah. If, if, if there is such, something like that. So, so it's quite interesting because when you are in a position as I am, uh, I will... Uh, I think firstly is to just remain very grounded and do what I do well, you know, which is 
to being the CEO of APSA and do this really, really well. And um, I, I always say I've been CEO from 2008. And even beyond APSA, I still see myself being a CEO, but maybe being a CEO of my own company at some, uh, mm -hmm. you know, someday. Mm -hmm. However, for now, I am grounded in what I'm doing. And, uh, and, and really, that's where my mind is, is how do I continue doing what I do and do it really well. Uh, you know, I, I've got a lot of, I've got 850 people uh, who, who I lead. I've got over 2,000 clients who I lead. And uh, for me, it's how, 200,000 clients that I lead. And for me, it's how do we continue being together and giving you that leadership that is going to grow you to the next level. And that's where my mindset is. My mindset is in, is in the now. Yeah. I hear you. Congratulations, by the way, on uh, the transition from Barclays to APSA. To APSA. Yeah. I mean, that you did, a, a, from, from where I was sitting, yeah, yeah. you did an awesome job, and I was clapping. Thank you. you know, I Thank clapping. you. I need to tell you this story. I went to my daughter's school, uh -huh. and on Women's Day, uh -huh. uh, these are like toddlers, they are, uh -huh. you know, below five. Yeah. And on Women's Day, they each had to mention who their role model was. Wow. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I just saw someone come up with a name. Ms. What? <laughs> Says, I want to be like Ms. Zinga Meli when I grow up. So you've got a lot of people that are rooting for you, that Thank are clapping you. for you, Thank that are cheering you. you. And, yeah. and we see all this and we're just grateful for what you do. You're, you're really a role model and we're yeah. thankful for that. I know that you're writing a book. Yes. Please tell us a little bit about that. Okay, so the book is actually uh, a very, um, it's, it's about my life. And uh, I must say the genesis of that book started here when I came to preach awesome. about, uh, you know, invited me nearly a year ago now, yes, I think. Yes. And uh, you had the conference and uh, we're having lunch here mm. and uh, you invited the wonderful men of God who seem to all have written books. <laughs> and when I finished um, whatever I was talking about, uh, the pastor said, that's a chapter right there. In fact, maybe two chapters. Mm -hmm. So the book is about my life. Mm -hmm. I decided then on that uh, I wanted to write this book. And it's about um, the challenges that I've been through, uh, you know, because with leadership, people only see what they see so true. when you show up. Yes. And they the don't side, know the, that yes. beyond that, as a leader, we go through a lot of challenges. Mm -hmm. And uh, after every challenge, you excel. And that's what the book is all about. It's talking about what I've been through at any point in time and how I have excelled. And the leadership challenges are so interesting. And I always <laughs> ask God, I'm saying, God, which one is coming next? Because after it comes, then it's a bit like I align a lot to Joseph. And I always say Joseph in the Bible went through so much. But after each challenge, he excelled. After mm. each challenge, he excelled. And that's what the book is all about. It's about the journey to the boardroom. It's about how do I get into that boardroom and also have the ability to stay in the boardroom mm. as long as I have stayed. Mm. So it really relates to a lot of professionals and, uh, you know, a lot of youth um, and a lot of women as well. How, the, what we've just been talking about, mm. how, how do I balance the family? Uh, but as for the youth, you know, how do you still, how do you still fail and succeed? Mm. Because the number of youth feel when you fail, that's the end. Yes. How do you still fail and succeed? How do you deal with peer pressure knowing that stay on your lane? Your mm. lane is what matters. Stay mm. on your lane. And as you are getting onto that leadership journey, how do you grow leaders? Because it's not just about, the book talks a lot about, not just about me, but about the people that I have uh, you know, worked with and grown who are CEOs in their own right. Mm. And I look at some CEOs and I, I'm so proud of them and say, okay, we started together, now look at you. Mm -hmm. And I'm just so proud. So it just brings, you know, how do you grow leaders? So that's what the book is all about. Wow. Yeah. That's powerful. Looking yeah. forward. When can we expect the book? Towards the end of the year. Towards, and, you know, I didn't realize I have a lot of respect for authors now. <laughs> Everybody who's written a book, yes. I take off my heart to you mm. because it does take a lot to... Find the time mm -hmm. to actually write mm -hmm. and uh, write in a way that people are going to understand what you are saying. Yes. And as you are writing, it's not about having you, me in mind, but, but it's about having the person who will read it in mind. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a lot of um, 
you know, really asking for God's grace and guidance as I'm writing. But because I'm so busy, I only ever write at weekends, you know, so that as well yes. kind of takes we a lot ask, of... We are really looking forward to it. Thank you. We're Thank really you very forward. much. I'm going to launch it at Mount Zion yeah. when well, it comes. Please, please. <laughs> looking forward to reading that Thank book. you very much. Mrs. Melo, another thing that uh, mm -hmm. I, I, you are a believer, you are in the corporate world. Yeah. Now, this is something, of course, sometimes as a pastor, I speak to a lot of people who are in the corporate world, yeah. who are believers, and sometimes you tend to feel as if there is a conflict or if not, they do not know how to appropriate their faith mm -hmm. with regards to how to operate in the corporate world. Mm -hmm. That when they need to be effective in terms of applying themselves, yeah, yeah. they're going to pray. Yeah. Or when they need to pray, <laughs> yeah. doing, how have you managed that? You being a believer and being in a corporate space, uh, yeah. how has your faith impacted your, your journey as a leader? Yeah. So, so, you know, and I mean, maybe I must start with um, the COVID-19 period. I think this is really where um, applying my faith has been so exciting. Mm -hmm. And it's a challenging time. Mm -hmm. But I've just been so excited about this period that, um, and, uh, you know, share what we do with my team. And at least, you know, two, three times a week, we we'll all encourage and share. And this is where you bring you know, Christ to the boardroom. Mm. You say, we're having a board meeting, you know, we're having a meeting with my colleagues, but first of all, let's talk about encouraging ourselves because amidst all this, as a leader, you have to show up and encourage people that amidst all this, God has your back. You yes. can't say I've got your back because yes. even I'm still struggling with a mask, right? <laughs> yes. So, but the only one who's got your back is God. But the words coming from my mouth to the team I think are very encouraging. So mm. I've learned that actually you can't separate to say, when I get to the office, let me pack Christianity. Mm. It has to be part of who you are. Mm. And uh, when I'm asked to introduce myself, I always be very clear that I am a born again Christian. Mm. So no questions asked, that's where we start. Mm. And I always say, say to people, I'm human. Meaning, you know, there will be times when I fell and uh, when I fall, uh, but, you know, I'll pick myself up and continue. So it's about knowing that your job is a ministry. Mm. Wow, and I'm that's I'm in powerful. this place for such a time as this, this yes. for a purpose. Wow. And because I'm here for a purpose, and it's a purpose-filled job, I can't leave my God behind. Mm. I can't, right? Wow. He has to be ahead of me. Yes. He has to be around me. That's yes. the only way I'll, I'll succeed. Yes. So when you know that you are in here so that you can, you, you can fulfill his purpose. And, uh, you know, was, people, when you ask me, how long are you going to do this or whatever? I'll say, I, I don't know. It's God's plan, right? Mm. Whatever he has. So when you know that you are in this together, it's interesting where... Before a board meeting, you have to say, Father God, please, you know, I know I've got a tough agenda today, mm. but you're going to be with me today, right? Mm. It's going to be tough. And we do have tough agenda, especially as bankers, mm. you know, uh, all the time. But when you've got your God there mm. and when you're leading, mm -hmm. you actually lead with, 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 with joy. Wow. Yeah. So I, I always lead with joy just because I know I'm not alone. I've got him right with me. Amen. And when you, Amen. when you do that, then it's actually much, much easier. Amen. Mm -hmm. There's a probably a young person watching, uh, mm -hmm. probably uh, just starting their career right now. Yeah. And uh, they're probably also looking the way you were looking and saying, one day I'll probably make it to the yeah. boardroom. Yeah. What advice would you give them? What are the secrets to... Yeah. a young person mm -hmm. that is probably aspiring yes. to follow your footsteps? I think firstly, you can make it. Everybody can be whoever, whatever they want, um, you know, in life. But number one, be clear with your vision. Just be clear, aspire. It doesn't mean because you aspire, that's what you end up doing. But it doesn't hurt to aspire because aspiring gives you purpose. Mm. In, and it keeps you going. Mm. I wanted to be a nurse, as you know, and I aspired <laughs> and to be a nurse. Today. And I aspired <laughs> to be a nurse. But then I didn't make it as a nurse. So it, it's actually it's it's very funny to hear that Mrs. Melu failed at nursing. I imagine, but right? Succeeded. <laughs> <laughs> that just is <laughs> unbelievable. I know, right? <laughs> Only God can explain that. But it also shows that I'm able, 
I'm able to talk about failure mm -hmm. without feeling embarrassed. Yes. And for, for young people, uh, you will fail in many ways. And it's not just failing in class. You will fail in many ways as you are walking through this journey called life. But it's to pick yourself up Amen. and grow from it Amen. and go to the next level. Amen. Just know that whenever you have failed once, you have grown twice. Wow. So when you that's powerful. when you when you when you think oh, of it that powerful. way, then you're fine. <laughs> yes. And you know, I was telling my son today, I said, look at you. You know, he had his own challenges. I said, look at you. You have you are actually a better man yes. than your friends who have not failed. Mm. They're yet to fail. Because mm. that's a journey called life. Yes. So um have a vision, aspire, life will throw curveballs at you. It is okay. It's how you pick them up very quickly. I remember Pastor Bruce, you told us a story about how you were preaching on that, how you were walking, yes. you know, yes. how you were walking <laughs> just to get to church, mm -hmm. how you said, you know, I had no money. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you've always told yes. us that story. <laughs> how, how you put a vision board yes. in your room. You put yes. a vision board and say, this is what I want to be, this vision board. Yes. And that's just, look at you now. I look at you, I'm so proud. So it's about having the vision, aspire, knowing that you fail because it's a journey called life, but when you get up, you'll be a better person. And you can be whatever you want to be. Just continue aspiring. And aspirations are interesting. And I follow Michelle Obama a lot. You know, wow. I look up to her. And uh, in her book, Becoming, she says, uh, you know, when, when, you have, when you've got to, people are saying to her, now you've left first lady. Mm -hmm. What next? You know, who would have known that there would be a what next? Mm -hmm. And she says, whatever is next is exciting because it's bigger than wow. being a first lady. Yes. And you're like, my mind can't comprehend, right? Mm -hmm. It's too small for that. Mm -hmm. Only God's mind can comprehend what Michelle can be after being first lady. Yes. And that's the way I look at it. Just aspire. You can be whatever you want to be, but work hard. Don't forget your God. Have the vision and just have the good attitude and you're going to make I was, it. I was going to ask you that because I thought maybe we should be intentional and deliberate. What in your view, you have done this journey, you have got a great yeah. uh, experience and mm -hmm. your career years are so many. Mm -hmm. in, you've probably interacted with some of the younger generation now, mm -hmm. whether they're called Generation X, Y, Z, mm -hmm. Millennials. Mm -hmm. What are some of the mistakes you think that they're making in their journey that so, might help to just clarify, to help them get to where they're going? So, so I think the peer pressure you know, peer pressure is so, it is like huge with this gener with, the, with the young generation. I mean, I've got teenagers and I see it. So just wanting to be like the person next door, I think that's big. Uh, run your own race, knowing that, um, you know, you're running your own race. I think for me, that's one. And two, I think, you know, as the women, uh, especially for the girl child, you know, the girl child does so well, gets married. Somehow, I don't know how somehow it gets lost. I think even that, the peer pressure, don't look at your friends, mm. just look at your own marriage, make it work. Uh, you know, I always get asked that question, what if you are getting more money than your husband or whatever? It doesn't matter, thank God for it. Humility, wow. you know, humility, because sometimes pride gets the better mm. of the youth. Mm. You know, just, you know, somehow they just think they know it all. Mm. So, you know, there's also the humility that comes in. Mm. Uh, you know, so uh, I would say humility is also one thing. But also, you know, they can do. Sometimes the youth, when things go wrong, they lose confidence. Mm. And I think the worst thing that can happen to, a, you know, a child, a youth, is loss of confidence. Mm. Because loss of confidence makes them look down and not up. up. Wow. Makes them worry about wow. what everybody's thinking, thinking. around them. Yes. I, and I tell to them, when you're my age, you're like, I don't care what you think. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, you, I don't care, care what, what you think. think. You At know? this point, it, it, it's, it's too late. <laughs> it's too late. I feel you. I, I think the older you grow, the less you become conscious yeah, like, of what no, other people think. No, as long as think. I'm doing the right exactly, thing. Exactly, exactly. Quite frankly, I don't care what you think. I'm doing the right thing in the eyes of God. I look mm. in the mirror, I said it's the right thing. But the kids, 
they worry too much. Mm. What is that going to think? And they make mm. wrong decisions mm. because, because of that. Because they make decisions to try and please everybody. Please everybody. everybody. Yes, yes, yes. You know, please everybody. So it's about you're running your own race. Do the right thing. Don't forget the values your parents taught you. Wow. Don't forget the values your guardians taught you. Those are so important. Always remember as a youth, what did the, my mom and dad teach me? Mm. Don't forget that. You know, sometimes you think it's old-fashioned. No, that's what's going to make who you are. Wow. And it's as basic as that. We taught you to wake up in the morning on a Sunday and go to church. Why have you stopped? Wow. Just because now you're making money. Mm. Wake up on a Sunday and go, go to, to church. church. Mm. You know, we taught you to, you know, when you see somebody just because, you know, at work you call them Mizinga, even on the street you want to call them Mizinga. No, you know, they're not your age mates. You know, so you find... <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I like that. I like yeah. that. So it's simple yeah. things like that that. Yes. that will open doors for you. Wow. You know, because attitude is everything. And Amen. for the youth, when you have the right attitude, the mistake they make is thinking attitude is not everything. Mm. When you have attitude, I always say, I give an example of a maid. Mm. Who is the right maid that you're going to have? Are you going to have a maid who who knows everything but has the wrong attitude or the maid with the right attitude but have a, knows, knows nothing. Yes. Because you're going to say, I'll teach them. Yes. You, this one this one is good, yes. but I'll teach them. Yes. Even and if that's they the don't same. know. Even if they don't, don't know, know, they're teachable. Yes. Are you teachable? Mm. Yeah. Wow. Yes. That's powerful. As we come to a close, our time is fast spent. As we come to a close, I just want to ask Mrs. Melu if you have anything on your heart that you'd like to say to the people that are watching. And by the way, thank you so much for making time to be with us today. Mm -hmm. But if you have anything that you'd like to say to the people that are watching, uh, anything on your heart, and if yeah. you can also before we close, we always want to end with prayer and pray for the people that okay. are watching. So if you could do that for us, we'd okay. really appreciate it. And if you could use that camera, that would be thank perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. I, th I think firstly, just to thank you, Pastor Bruce, for having me here you and mrs musidi please just uh, thank you thank so, you much. so thank much. much i'm a big fan of mount zion i'm part of mount zion mm -hmm. and uh you know just to encourage everybody during this time especially the time of covid19 just remain connected to the lord because that's the only thing that is going to see us through and uh you know we have to continue thanking god for his grace it's not by coincidence that the numbers are going up but the people who are being healed are also going up, up yes. you know. So it's not by uh, coincidence, but it's by God's grace. Amen. So amidst everything that we're going through, let's not forget God's grace. Amen. And let's just remember, we've come to, you know, it's mid-year now, June. You had promises at the beginning of the year. You committed to say, this is what I'm going to deliver this year. Mm. Don't give up. God is not, you know, a God of, you know, six months. Mm -hmm. You know, for him, he's still got that promise. Just hold on to him Amen. and say, God, you promised me this. And it can be, uh, you know, it looks like it's all been overtaken by events. But don't worry. In God's plan, it's God's calendar. It's still coming. So hold on to whatever you, prom go, you, you ask God for, whatever you prayed for. Hold on to it. It's still coming. So maybe we can just pray. Yes, please, if you can, go ahead. Okay, let's pray. Father God, we just want to thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you for the opportunity of uh, having us here, mighty God. We thank you for the opportunity of being able to share and continue to glorify your name. Father God, we thank you even for your grace, knowing that we are able to speak and do whatever we do and have the testimonies because all the glory belongs to you. Mighty God, I just want to pray for that youth, Heavenly mm. Father, that is conflicted, that is going through challenges, that is going through the decisions to say, what decision do I take in my life? I pray, mighty God, that you may touch them, that Heavenly Father, they will never be the same again. I pray even, Father God, for that couple, that couple that mm. may be having problems in the marriage, almighty God. I pray, Heavenly Father, that may you visit them. May you visit the mighty God, knowing that, Heavenly Father, with you, everything is possible, mighty God. I pray even for that 
for that couple, that youth that is saying, where do I get the capital to do my business? Everything seems to have shut down. Even during this period, everything seems to have shut down. Mighty God, may they continue knowing that you will be with them because the word, your word is very clear that when you go through the waters, I'll be with you. Yes. When you go through the rivers, you shall not drown, Almighty yes. God. When you go through the fires, Heavenly Father, you shall not burn. You promised us that you will never leave us nor forsake, forsake us, us, mighty yes. God. And you are the God who never changes. You are yes. the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes. So, mighty God, may we hold on to your word. Mm -hmm. May each and every person watching right now touch them at their point of need. Mm -hmm. Touch them, Heavenly Father, at their point of need, Almighty God. Show them that they are staying at their, their, their at this time for such a time as this. Mm -hmm. And Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you even for Mount Zion, mm -hmm. even for the ministry, even for the leadership, Almighty God, in particular, Mr. and Mrs. Msidi. Heavenly Father, be with them, Mighty God, continue giving them the grace mm -hmm. to do bigger and more creative things as they have been doing. We pray all this in mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Wow. Thank you so much, Mrs. Melu. Thank, thank you so you. much. This has been Making the Right Move. We have had our guest, Mrs. Mzinga Melu, the uh, Chief Executive Officer of APSA, and I know that you have been blessed. Thank you for joining us today. I trust that we'll see you again next week. Please, if you can, download the Mount Zion Christian Center app. If you can, go to our YouTube channel and subscribe and also click the notification button so that whenever there are resources posted, you will be notified. If you can get on the different uh, Facebook platforms so you can also be notified, just like the pages. We're looking forward to hearing from you in the comments. Thank you for joining us. God bless you. Have a powerful night and shalom, shalom.